Hey y'all, welcome back to Fun on Weekdays podcast. For today's episode, I have my first ever family member as a guest. If you're watching the video, then you can see, but if not, you're just listening. I have my dad with me. <laughs> Hold on, before we even get started, am I gonna be going by dad, daddy, Charlie, Chuck? What are we doing here? <laughs> so is there anybody else that listens to um, this podcast that their parents still have them call them mommy and daddy? Because I'm 24, my sisters are 26 and 28, and we all still call them mommy and daddy. Um, but now that I feel like daddy has a kind of gross connotation to it, I think we should stick with Charlie. Charlie's <laughs> fine for today, but after this, you're gonna go back to daddy. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So I'm excited to have my dad with me. Right now we are in Fort Worth, Texas. We're going to the NASCAR race, and this is the first time we're hanging out since um, March, right? It has been a little while, yes. Yes. Yeah, so we're sitting here in our matching t-shirts for Daddy Daughter Weekend, and he's been dying to get on the podcast. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. I, I've been a little excited, <laughs> a little nervous, so you're going to hear my voice jump around here a little bit, so I'm going to apologize now because I'm sure I'm going to say something really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Just bear with me. <laughs> I can tell you're being nervous. I don't, I don't, I don't know. My voice is like going up and down. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I'm trying not to use like the radio voice, so all we, right. All we right, did a little um, test right before we started recording, and my dad broke out this radio voice, and we're like, where'd that come from? But maybe you should bring it back. I, no, I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to embarrass myself well enough. Okay, so I figure we'll start it off with some icebreakers. So I asked y'all on Instagram, what are some questions you wanted me to ask my dad on the podcast? And he came prepared with all of his own ideas. But before we get into those, we want to cover yours. So the first one... Who's funnier, me or you? I think I definitely am the funnier one. I mean, I did teach you your skills, but you know, I'm here to learn. So you're teaching me how to do this whole thing, talking into this microphone that's all bedazzled. So um, I don't know, maybe you're gonna teach me something uh, new, but I am full of uh, more jokes and more embarrassing moments this weekend to come, I'm sure. <laughs> it's so professional. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be. There's that, ra there's that radio voice. All right. You're Sorry. talking like I'm interviewing you for a job. <laughs> you're like, I, know. I don't know. Well, I guess I might learn a thing, for, thing or two from you. I'm really just here for open experiences, uh, and maybe you can teach me how to be funnier. <laughs> All right, I'm going to calm down. So maybe I am the funnier one just based off of that. Okay, next question is, what do you think of me becoming an influencer slash podcaster, and what do you think of the podcast? So I think it's really cool. I don't really know much about it. I do. Um, and again, I'm trying not to be like all polished and all that. So um, I think it's really cool that uh, Jenna has gone down this path. I don't really understand the business. I've been trying to do some <laughs> research and, and all that, but I don't, I try to explain to other people like, what does Jenna do? I don't um, really know either. Okay, if it well, makes you feel any better. Well, I, I, I'm kind of the same way with my job, so that's okay. It's kind of roll with it. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's really cool. I think it's fun that you're just doing something that's very unique and very non-traditional and and uh, I like the idea that you have so much flexibility and can kind of do what you're liking, so. Okay, and another question. We, I have two other sisters, Sydney and Erin. I'm the youngest of three. They want to know what it's like to be a girl dad. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't know anything else. So uh, I always say I have three girls because I don't want to have four, or I didn't want to have four. <laughs> but uh, I thought there was going to be a boy in there somewhere, but it just wasn't in the cards. So now I'm just waiting for that uh, grandson. Nope. <laughs> Huh? Finger. Don't look at me. Huh? No, <laughs> Don't look I'm at me. I'm not saying you. Oh, okay. No okay. time soon either. No rush. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> there is a family. There is a family bet. Remember the family bet? What is it? Huh? Whoever has the whoever gives me the first grandson gets a little bit of extra cash. Oh, really? Yeah, but don't. It's not like a race you have to like compete for. So. Oh shoot. Well. Yeah. Maybe I should get rid of that sponsorship <laughs> I had recently. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. No rush. No rush. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, another question on those on those terms um somebody wants to know do you oh wait okay let's see what did you think that i was going to do growing up oh my gosh i really i really didn't know i, I mean i know that you like fashion i know that you just like entertaining in general mm -hmm. um i really didn't know so uh I, I i didn't know okay well i think i always used to want to be a teacher an art teacher mostly because mommy's a teacher yeah, well, you definitely have those skills. I yeah, I that that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but then I realized I'm too impatient, so I don't think that I could deal with kids like that. That is very true. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, another question: How does it feel raising a legend? 
<laughs> Ooh, um, it's improving every day. <laughs> I mean, just by fact of what we're doing this weekend here is going to be, that's just amazing. And uh, the fact that I'm actually riding your coattails and uh, yeah, that's just something pretty cool. Yeah, roles are reversed now. It's 24, uh -huh. so imagine what we'll be doing when I'm like 30. I know, I can't wait to ride on your big boat and I know. <laughs> visit you in your lake house. That's going to be awesome. You'll probably be living in the ensuite I, I, by I'll, then. I'll live in the boat, that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or the shed. <laughs> okay, another question. These are these are two more, and then we'll get on with it. But okay. somebody wants to know your most embarrassing story that you have of me. Oh man, <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> uh, I, I embarrassing. I have one that comes to mind. Wow, embarrassing, embarrassing. I honestly, I'm never embarrassed of you, Jenna, or of my girls. That's a politically correct answer, but I really can't think of anything. <laughs> I can't. Really, you can't yeah. think of that one time in high school. Um, clue me, give me another clue. Oh, I don't uh, know if I down, need to Down clue. in the basement? Yeah. On the couch? When I found the underwear? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just locked those things out as a dad. If that's what you're talking about, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Okay, yeah. Okay. 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 Um, and then what's the funniest thing that I did as a kid? Or like, what's your best memory of me? Like, what was I like growing up? Um, so there's a couple of things. First of all, Jenna was born with this giant head of hair. I, I don't mean, know where it went because my hair is falling out and now it's gray. <laughs> but she had this giant mop of hair. I mean, it was always, I mean, her mother did a great job cutting all the girl's hair, <laughs> fixing it all, but it was like this giant head of hair. So, um, I guess watching you growing up, uh, it was really fun. I think because, and I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to cry during this whole thing, but, um, I think it was fun watching you grow up because you probably had the closest personality to me so like mm. it's, it's kind of weird how each of the daughters progressed um, and they just have different personalities and different looks Jenna definitely has her mother's beautiful looks but she has got my personality sometimes that's not a good thing but um, <laughs> I, I mean I think just watching you entertain me um, was was a lot of fun so um, here we are entertaining each other <laughs> <laughs> oh that was right, kind of nice wipe the tear. <laughs> I know I already made my dad cry earlier so mm -hmm. the story behind these shirts is that growing up, my dad would take me and my sisters out to do like a daddy-daughter day. And it kind of goes along the lines of a fun on weekday activity. We would go ice skating or we'd go to the Painesville Speedway. I don't know, what else would we do? Just random things. I just was, I was just so proud. I actually just like <clears throat> dressing the girls up and walking them around the mall and <laughs> making all the other, bads, the other dads look bad and all the moms thinking, man, that guy is, he's really got it going. So I, I just like showing off my daughter. So. I mean, do you, do you remember how it started? No. So Daddy Daughter, Daddy Daughter Day actually started, I know I'm starting to talk really fast, so I'll slow down. So Daddy Daughter Day actually started around um, when Jenna's mom was working, I think at the YMCA. Oh and yeah. And we would drop her off, and then we would go to, I think it was called Spud Nuts, or I don't know, Dunkin' Donut, maybe Dunkin' Donut. And I would take the girls to the, uh, to the, bake, you know, to the donut shop, and they had these swivel stools, and it was just fun just to take the girls there with their nice white sweatshirts and we'd <clears> sit on the uh, on the stools and we would just spin each other around in circles and then get of course jelly and powdered donut all over, the, <laughs> all over the white sweatshirt but that's actually how it all started and then it just evolved into being like scheduled activities okay love that and so daddy daughter day we made that an official saying and then our my mom's mom grandma um, made us embroidered DDD sweatshirts so when my dad came to Fort Worth, I was like, well, I haven't seen him in a while. I want him to remember I'm still his little girl, even though I'm 24 now. So I had these shirts, Daddy Daughter Weekend, made, and I made a whole video to surprise him about it and showed him the video earlier, and he had a tear. So I'm such a crybaby. <laughs> that is the downfall, if there is one, of having three daughters. I, I cry at I cry at you know Hallmark card commercials. Oh, yeah, we watch a lot I, of Hallmark videos. Yeah, I, I cry at just about everything or movies. Anymore. Okay, well now that we've answered all of your questions and maybe hopefully you're a little settled, we're going to get into some background to who my dad is. Who is Charlie? So, all right. introduce yourself. Okay, so most of my friends call me as, uh, know me as Chuck. I prefer being called Charlie. Charlie just sounds like, you can't say the name Charlie without a smile. So I'm trying to rebrand myself, right? Just like I tried to rebrand with Genevieve. There you go. And, and I like that. I wanted to call you Genevieve originally. Do you, 
So I who mean, was the one that was it? You was it mommy then? That, yeah. That, that, okay. Well, See, she said mommy. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be so weird for people to listen to. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Charlie, we go by Charlie. Yeah. So it's Charlie to all my new friends. Um, it doesn't really <laughs> matter. But anyhow, um, so what do you want to know? Like who? You know, like my whole life story? Or yeah, like, yeah, how, how kind of. Where did you grow up? All right. So uh, I've born, raised, uh, still live in a small little town called Painesville, Ohio. I, I consider it like Mayberry. So when I'm trying to de- trying to describe it to people about how small town it is, I just describe it as Mayberry. And you may <laughs> you, you may <clears throat> not what's even know. Mayberry. <laughs> just gonna say you probably don't know what Mayberry is. Is that so like, like a reference to something? Uh, yeah, it's a reference to a okay. very old TV show, the Andy Griffith, Griffith show. Oh, okay. So, like way way back. So maybe I should stop doing that. But um, so <laughs> my we, audience is a little bit younger. <laughs> I get that. I get that. No, I'm I'm, I'm trying to appeal to the older folks. Right? Okay. okay. Yeah. All we right. can share this with all your Facebook okay. friends. All right. So so um, we we just moved recently um, to a to a new house, but this town that we're that we've been living in. Um, it's the same, you know, it's the same school system that all three of, uh, three, three of the girls went to. It's the same one that uh, my wife, Lynn, uh, she and I graduated same year, same high school. We were not high school sweethearts. <clears throat> um, I was actually dating her best friend in, uh, in high school. Savage. Yeah, there's a, that's, a, that's another, that's like a three-legged stool story. We're not going to probably go down that path, but we're still <laughs> friends. <laughs> but, nice touch in there. I was going to ask you about it, but maybe some bad blood still exists. No, so, no, okay. no, Carolyn. Hey, hi. hi. <laughs> Listen, I, I, no, um, but it's a good story. Anyhow, um, same small town. A lot of my friends still live there, um, so I really enjoy it. I'm uh, 53 years old. I am, uh, I've been working for the same company for the last, oh my gosh, 20, I think 28 years. I've been working Insane. from home. Longer than I have existed. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I used to be on the road a lot. I used to travel like every day, like all day, making different uh, client visits and um, <clears throat> things changed. I, I progressed through my career and I've been working from home now, um, home short and, and all that like people are used to doing now with the COVID. I've been doing that for 20, I think 23, 24 years now. So I'm very accustomed to doing that. And um, I like the flexibility that it, uh, <clears throat> that it gives me. And let's see, what else? What else do you want to know? Yeah, well, then you went to college and that's when you started dating my mommy. mom, right? Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> Every time I say it now, I'm like, M- I'm like, mommy, sorry. What? Mommy? Sorry. That's <laughs> yeah. a, that's yeah, a I know. I know joke who on TikTok. I no, know. do you know that reference on TikTok? Oh, I know. It's, it's from a cartoon, right? The mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's okay. Cool. Yeah. I, know. I don't think it's from the cartoon. Um, but... I think it is. I think it's, okay. yes, it's from the little, it's from the little baby, baby cartoon boy that talks like a person. I don't know. I think so. Okay. All right. Well, Anyhow. anyways, so in college, <laughs> that's when you started dating her. I did. Well, we were we were friends all through high school. We had mutual friends, and um, I was friends with her along with her best friend, who um, I was dating at the time. But mutual friends, and then uh, I guess you can say we connected in college, our, our freshman year, after a series of events. Oh God! Ew, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's nothing bad. I mean, oh, okay. I mean, I mean, the first night we hooked up wasn't really hooking up. We slept in the car together, but we slept in the front seat when somebody <clears> was in the back seat. So it's not like crazy. Not like one of those stories okay but yeah. anyhow we can um, leave those details out that's okay. not really what I was asking about <laughs> <laughs> all right so so what do you want to talk about okay college? so and you guys have been what married for 30 years 30 years yes 30 years so I feel like you have a lot of really good insight I am really really lucky that I grew up with like very loving parents that are still very much in love so I feel like I have a high expectation of what my future looks like with my potential husband so I want to get into that as well Okay. Um, so I guess where do we start? Should we start with that? Should we start talking about dating, oh, or should yeah. we keep talking about? Okay. Oh, he wants to start talking about dating. <laughs> One of the questions was, "How do you feel about my dating life, and what kind of guy do you see me, your daughter, with?" Okay. First of all, the the, the last part of the question was like really simple. Of course, if he's not like me, then, <laughs> okay. then I, I don't, I'm probably gonna have an issue. Then but, I don't want it. If he's yeah, not like yeah, you, I don't want it. Yeah. So. For, I don't. I don't understand this whole dating thing. The, the, all the apps that you guys use, and like, you can go on your phone and find out within like fifty feet of where you're standing in a bar. You just hook up, and then you're then you're done, and you walk away. And I that's think not, it's that's actually not like dating. I think it's actually a mile. It, it, I think the closest you can get is a mile radius. Okay. And I think that would be more like Tinder. So are you familiar with the other with the types of apps there are? Well, There's like three main ones. 
So uh, that doesn't really matter. The fact that matters is there's apps to help you find people, and okay. that's just, I just, it's just foreign to me. To me, I, I am a total avid people watcher, so to me, I like walking into any room, airport, whatever, and I'm a, I, I like watching people's mannerisms and their eye contact and all that. And back then, it was just called having game. So if you <laughs> like somebody, you, know, you had to figure out a way to, to grab their attention and, and talk to them and, and kind of break the ice. Just this whole thing with like these apps, that, that's like cheating. And then, I don't know, then people wonder why it's not working out. So you don't think that a genuine relationship can come from a dating app? I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, I think... But the, you just think it's kind of a weird concept because you didn't grow up with that. So it's like... It's just, I'm old. Yeah, okay. I'm old school. I'm All right. School. So, but I mean, I, I think the advantage, if it's used right, I definitely could see how it could be used in a way to, if people are being honest, which if you don't have that in the beginning, it, nothing's going to nothing's gonna last. But I think if you're honest with like what your what your likes are and dislikes and your interests and all that, if, if all of that is true, um, then that definitely is a good way to crack the door open to, to get connected to, to meet somebody. But if you're just making all that up, just so they can try and, and have a hookup, then then you're already the relationship's already broke before it even starts. Yeah, I think I don't think it's necessarily people are using dating apps for hookups. I think maybe that's like Tinder, but I think people my age now are on dating apps because it's just instant validation. Because when people like your profile or they're flirting with you, it makes you feel good about yourself and it gives you that attention that you're seeking. And you could maybe like hang out with them a couple times, maybe meet them out at a bar and then see where it goes. But I think that it's more so a way to get connected to people your age and maybe go on like a double date or something. But I personally, I've gone on maybe like two actual hinge dates and I always am like, Ugh, I'm never doing it again, I hate it. But I agree, I would much rather meet somebody in person. But I don't think, I think maybe people your age see dating apps as like a way to hook up. But I don't think it's really that. I mean, there's definitely people that are on there for that. But I, I, I get mean, like that. Aaron, for example. Aaron, hey sis. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> My sister Aaron is always going on Hinge, checking out the new guys in Cleveland. Um, yeah, but how's that working out? Well, well, how's it working out for Sydney? My oldest sister Sydney, she met Alex, her now husband. Uh, I don't know what she met him on, but she met him through that, and they've been married three years. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean. Again, I, I think it's just a matter of it's it's a way to it's a way to get connected with people and and see if it's there. But to put all your eggs in the one basket and just just that one person, and then you meet them and and they aren't who they say they are, or for whatever reason the connection isn't there. I mean, I, I think there's just that's no different, I guess, than meeting somebody at a bar the old the old school way or or whatever. But. I, it just I see all these videos of people saying, "All right, this guy's profile said this. He was this tall, and he's active, and all that." Catfish. And then it, yeah, catfishing, okay. right? So yeah. I guess that's the whole, mm -hmm. maybe not a demise, but that's like one of the whole things that doesn't. It it makes sense to me. I understand why it happens, but um, okay. So your advice for myself and people my age, if we're looking to meet a guy or a girl or whoever. What's your advice and what would be your approach? So say I'm at a bar or say I'm at the gym or somewhere and I see a really cute guy, what do you think my pickup line should be? What do you think my approach is? Oh, so <laughs> I don't think that, that, that's, I can't answer that question. You have to, you, first of all, you have to make a connection with them somehow, some way. Just seeing somebody across the gym, you have to, to me, I'm about the eyes. Okay. You have to make the eye contact. A little flirty. Well, I mean, maybe a little bit flirty, but at least you have to make sure that they see you seeing them. Okay. To just make, the, and then, I don't know, some people say, there's that phrase, love at first sight. There's mm -hmm. that time, time could, could stand still. I'm saying it happens for everybody, but time kind of stands still with many people that I meet for the first time. Not that I'm trying to hook up with them. It's just, there are people that I see at grocery stores or wherever I'm at, and they see each other, you just smile, and all of a sudden, Time kind of locks in, and you realize that they are picking up on a positive vibe or whatever, and then that is your opportunity to say, "Hey, you either give like they either give you like a fake smile back, or or a hand wave, or some kind of gesture to say, I am open for you to approach me, or I'm going to come talk to you.'" And it just kind of happens. But okay. I mean, I, that might just be magic and smoke and mirrors. But well, this is my <laughs> approach. When I go out and I see a cute boy, what I do, and it works every time. Buy me a drink. No, no, I never do that, but they always do end up doing that. <laughs> but I see somebody from afar, and if I think he's cute, then I'll look at him, and I'll smile, and then I look away, and then like make eye contact again, but I 
keep my eyes focused in the one way and I like catch my peripheral vision to see when he's looking at me. So when he's looking at me, I look at him again and I catch him looking at me. So then he's like, oh shoot, I just got caught looking at her. And then he feels stupid because he's like, oh, now, well now I have to go talk to her because she just caught me looking at her. And then he, and then they always come up. Did you, did you learn that trick from <clears throat> me? No, but um, maybe, maybe subconsciously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when would I learn that from you unless you're flirting with other girls? No. Unless you're doing that. With... No, <laughs> when I do that, when I meet, when I make friends, I mean, I make friends with just pretty much everywhere, everywhere I go. I mean, okay, well, I'm, I'm saying it in flirty connotation. I, but, okay, right. I get that. Well, that's kind of, I can't do that because it's kind of creepy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do that with guys. Like if I'm looking at somebody and he, and he sees me, not that I'm checking him out, but I'm obviously there was something that, that caught my attention on that person. Like, Oh, like I a, want to be friends with that guy. Right. They could be like a fun person or they're wearing a shirt or they're they're doing something or saying something or whatever that just caught my attention. Like, huh, I just I want to know more <clears> about <throat> that that conversation or that person and it just kind of happens. Okay. All right. I like that. Well, you have questions um, for me with me. Well, dating. yeah. I mean, well, it's not really a question so much, but kind of going back okay. along those lines. So, I mean, you do have to realize that as a dad, I mean, your number one job when your daughters are dating is to not like the boy. <laughs> I mean, that's just that's just that's just common that's just common knowledge, or it should be common knowledge. But um, that kind of makes me think of that one story. Remember that one time when a boy there's a boy that texted um, texted our daughter Erin to come out of the house to to get picked up on a date. Oh my and gosh! He, yeah. And he, <laughs> and he texted her to say, "Hey, I'm here. Come on out." And she was like, okay, gotta go. He's uh, he's in the driveway. I said, you're not going anywhere. You stay right here. He has to come to the door and get you. She's like, but I'm like, no, he has to come to the door and get you. So, <laughs> so then his uh, sister walks around the car, opens up the back hatch of the, of the car, of the SUV, grabs a pair of crutches, goes to the side door, <laughs> <laughs> and gets it for, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to mention his name, but gets the crutches for him. He howls up to the front door of the house. I mean, like he kind of almost like fell on the step on the front stoop. When was like, this? Was this in high school? Was this? Yeah, in high, this is in high school. Yeah, you said his oh, name, okay. so I don't know if we're allowed to do that or not. No, we can so, say it. I'm okay. sure it's so, yeah, so, so much time so, has passed. Okay, so Patrick Patrick came up and he almost fell on the front step because he's trying to learn how to use these crutches. <laughs> and then I I got I I felt like this big when he got to the door. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I didn't know. But you know, to the to that point, I, it's a long story of you still there are some expectations of boys treating girls nice and treating them well and uh you know if they're not doing that <clears> and putting you uh putting you above all others then um i take issue with that what are some other expectations that you have for how my future boyfriend or husband should treat me too because i feel like my generation kind of lost those types of um chivalrous acts maybe but you think that they are just an you know an expectation well, so what are some things? Yeah, so first of all, I mean, the, I, I kind of go back to like the technology. Communication, this whole texting and email and instant messaging and, and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. I mean, I get it. I use it at work all the time. But you can't, you can't have a conversation based on that all the time or that being like the main conduit. So you have to talk. Because if you're not talking, you're 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 inferring, or maybe you're making a, a bad guess or an estimate of what they meant, and and you can just and you can do that wrong. I mean, I mm -hmm. think your mother talks to me so sweet and nice when I read her text, and then I hear her <laughs> because you want her to think <laughs> because she that's, what, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not meant to be a slam. I just get, I just get to replay the text in my head of how it sounds when it comes out, and I know which ones come out. Like I, I think they're supposed to be nice, <laughs> and the other ones that I know are not supposed to be nice. But I mean, when you're learn, when you're when you're in a relationship and and you're not married for thirty years, you can't do that. So this, so then it leaves you mm -hmm. kind of aloof as to like what do they mean, and then you start looking too much into it, and then it, mm -hmm. it snowballs. Yeah. I okay. totally agree. Okay. Well, there's so many ways for us to communicate that you didn't have before, so I feel like it should be easier, but for yeah. whatever reason, it's harder. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, going back to the, you call that chivalrous. <clears throat> it's not chivalrous. It's just called, it's called, you know, being respectful and, and being a man. I mean, just like opening doors, and I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, open the car door, but I mean, if we're going in a restaurant, I will always stand outside, hold the door open, let your mother mommy mm -hmm. walk through the door <laughs> you know pump her gas i mean surprise her with little things you know little notes around the house yeah you always do that just you know flowers i mean oh that's that's a different topic we'll go back to that one but okay. but just generally being considerate and thoughtful and if this is somebody that um even if it's very early on in the in the relationship 
instead of trying to figure out you know, how many pins you can juggle in the air at one time, if this is somebody that you think that you wanna invest some time in, then you gotta let that person know that that is the person that you are focused on as opposed to you're one of several. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, and then people get mis misunderstandings as to where the relationship's going and, and then they don't know where they stand and then it just causes a whole bunch of other issues. Okay, so my last question for you and then you can get into what you wanna talk about is what would be your piece of advice for myself and others to find a relationship like yours that has lasted for 30 years? How have you been able to foster that healthy dynamic? Okay, so um, when I, you know, boy, I have to choose my words. I don't wanna choose my words really carefully, but I don't wanna say you have to lower your expectations because that is not the case. In fact, you have to raise the bar, but you have to lower your expectations in terms of what you see on social media and what you see on the, on TV and Hallmark movies videos. and all that. Yeah, movies. I mean, I, we can't all wear like sweater vests and you know, Pea look coats good. and scarves. Right, right, we can't all do that. But, you know, I, I think what has worked for us is um, just figuring out different ways to show how you appreciate someone, how you love them, and, and how you are putting them first. And whether it's, you know, notes left around the house, whether it's, you know, vacuuming or cleaning, and I'm using like old, old adult things, so I probably have to tone it down a little bit for the No, I think age, those are all still applicable now because I think those are things that aren't often done, so when they are, it has even more value. Well, so, so there you go. I mean, just go, getting your, getting your, while you're getting showered up, if you're gonna be going somewhere, just going and taking a car and getting gas and getting the car washed so it's nice and clean and fresh so that when you get in the car looking good, the car looks good when you go out. But I think it's just finding different things um, to show that you are thinking about them when you're not with them, to me, I think is, is, is key. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you can be, uh, look at how many people are, are, are all showy and, and, and settings with groups of people and, and they do all this stuff with social media <laughs> and all that. And then you know other situations and you look at it and you're like, well, you know that's it's just it's fake. Mm -hmm. So that is, I guess, if you're if you're not real and and and, and you're putting up a front and not being um, you know truthful in terms of you know how you feel and showing people, then it kind of goes back to the original question you had about dating, which is you you kind of don't know where you stand and then you know you just start second guessing everything. Yeah, I think also social media too has a play in the fact that people do nice things now because they want to capture it to show it off on social media. Not because you actually just want to do it for the person, just because it makes you feel good. Like you don't have to share every single time someone leaves you a note or buys you flowers. But I think now that's a lot of people's ulterior motive to it is like showing off, oh, I'm in such a happy relationship. I think not showing those things is actually a, a truer depiction that you are in a healthy relationship because you don't feel the need to like impress other people with it. Right, well, and again, it kind of goes back to whether you use the term fake or not, you're either, you know, you're either doing it for them for the right reason or you're doing it to, because somebody else is watching. And, and mm -hmm. it, I don't know what that phrase is, do some, you know, dance like nobody's watching, you know, <laughs> do, some, do something nice as if nobody's gonna see you. And, and you should feel good about doing that whether somebody sees you or not. Uh, you know, eventually someone will, someone will recognize that something was done above and beyond than, than the standard and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you know the person or was seen it's just that should make you feel good yeah and, you know just that's just being a good person yeah and being together with mommy for 30 years obviously the things that you have done for fun over the years has changed a lot from teenagers to my age to young parents to now empty nesters I know so how have you kept the relationship alive and had fun throughout the years and what do you, what do you guys do for fun now Okay. Because you're very active. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. So let me go back real quick. So my comment around like, you know, setting some expectations. I mean, there is not, there is no such thing as a perfect marriage. There just isn't. So there's a roller coaster ride that every relationship goes through. So we've had our own roller coaster ride. Sometimes you might have heard it or not. But, you know, there's, there's, there's. I really only heard you guys fight maybe like three times. Yeah, well, we don't really fight very well. Yeah. I mean, usually because when we're fighting, then somebody just, just walks away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't fight well. But, <laughs> but I mean, I, there's just a roller coaster ride um, uh, of, in that relationship. So it, it is what it is. 30 years with somebody is a really long time, and you might be like, how do you not get bored of that person? Or you know them so well. Like, what else do you do? 
Yeah. So. Especially, especially having grown up in Painesville, you still live there. Like, it's it's hard. Do, do you ever feel like you've exhausted every opportunity of th- fun things you can do in Painesville? Like, um, no, because okay. there's there's lots more that I want to be doing. So I think I think you are. I'm. I. I that's why I like watching you and get mm-hmm. excited following you because <laughs> you're doing things now that I wish maybe I would have done uh, when I was younger. But that doesn't mean I can't do them now. So yeah, the fact that the fact that I'm I'm making some decent money and now I don't have kids in the house and I don't have a dog in the house that are you know <laughs> things that I have to think about before I leave. There's just a lot of things that I want to do and um, mommy. <laughs> doesn't always want to do them with me so it was it was kind of a, a reckoning that I had a, a few years ago that I just came to the realization that um, if there are things that I want to do that she doesn't want to do or isn't interested in that does not mean that I can't do them so I you know I go on I do a lot of different things on my own I would love to have you know have her involved in, in some of those things but she doesn't like to walk she doesn't like to hike she doesn't like doing some of those activities <laughs> yeah um, so I just figured out that I have to figure out um, how to do it either by myself or with some other friends and you know come back and regroup on what she does like to do so that we can grow so now that we're turning this this corner with uh, with the empty nester and and I'm, I'm really excited about retiring someday. Um, we yeah, have how to, far away are you from that? Uh, too far. She's too far. she's very far. Yeah. So so now we're now we're getting to the point where you know the girls, you know, you're for example, you're down in Texas and Sydney's down in Texas and Aaron's in, in Cleveland. We've got to you know we've got to figure out what does the future look like. So um, while I like boating and 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 all those types of things and and I really love to travel, I really haven't been able to travel because. In the summertime, when when she's you know when she's off of work, then you know the boat's in the water. And she's a teacher, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I should have said that. Um, <laughs> so so she's off of work, and the boat's in the water. So that's been the focal point. And I just you know I maybe in the last couple of years, I've just realized that I like travel so much. There's just way too many things that I want to see and do that is not attached to water. That you know maybe maybe I don't put the water you know put the boat in the water next summer, and and we buy a small camper or we. Airbnb it for a, for yeah. a summer just to see, but I think that would just kind of spark um, maybe some new interests, you know, hobbies. I don't know along the way, even if it is just for a summer of, of research. But this is like the this is like the window to do it because there's no grandkids involved and we've got nobody to answer to other than ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I think and you're still in good health that you can do all those things before you get a little older. Oh, oh, and yeah. I'm pushing you around <laughs> and changing your guys' diapers. That won't be for a long, long time. But, um, yeah, I mean, you're definitely more adventurous, I would say. And even just considering the fact that we lived in our our childhood house where I grew up for, what, 21 years? How long? 21 years. So we grew up in the same house for 21 years. And you guys have been talking about moving for years and years and years. But Mommy never wanted to because we grew up there. There were so many memories in that house. And then finally you downsized to a new place. And now I feel like you guys have been having so much fun redoing it together. And it's a right. new way to bond right. um, over just like those house projects. And now she's like, wait, this was kind of fun. It really wasn't that crazy of a change. And now I think she's maybe more receptive to doing other things. But yeah, it's crazy to me that you guys have lived in Painesville forever. Because one of the things that I talk about on this podcast is you can always go back to where you grew up. But right now, at this point in my life, I have no attachments to... A family or a significant other or anything else so if I ever want to travel I can do it now whereas you're kind of on the opposite side where you're like I've done my duty of raising my kids like I'm kind of in this you know like area and now you can do what you want to do right so you have to understand so I wanted to move I wanted to move you know a long time ago and and what you what you have to kind of put into perspective is that um, you know, when mommy wasn't working, I keep doing it, but I know. <laughs> we can call her Lynn. You call her Lynn. Okay, okay. So when you know, when Lynn was the stay at home mom, I mean that's that's when I was in growth mode with, with my job, trying to figure out, okay, what's the next step career wise, what kind of path and all that. That was really the time to move. And first of all, you know, she does not like change. Yeah, she just doesn't like change. Yeah, so, you and I are so opposite in the fact that we get so like antsy. Yeah. If we're not doing something different, I feel like I, I actually go crazy. Well, whether whether I'm doing something different or just doing something in general, yeah, I don't sit still for very long. <laughs> but but there, but 
that it kind of goes back to the job thing too, we had to make a decision, right, of what was the right fit for the family. And, and you know, both of your, both of your grandparents were around. Um, she didn't like change. So I maybe passed up some opportunities in the job or in the, in, you know, with, with who I was working for. I think what has changed for us is the move. And while I've been wanting to move, I've been wanting to move for a couple of reasons, which I, I think I want to do go back to that for a minute. But I think the move was good because A, it, it helped, um, helped Lynn with some uh, adjustment to change, which she doesn't like, but, but, but <laughs> we're I, just I, like dogging on her right I now. <laughs> I, don't mean to, I don't mean to, honey. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, we love you, girl. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think though that it allowed her to open up a little bit and just see that, wow, she liked the house and she was attached to the memories and all that. We drive through the same neighborhood now and she realizes that there was something else um, that, that she would enjoy and, and you look at the neighborhood and we still love the old neighborhood but is different than where we are now and, and it was a good change. It was just getting out of that comfort zone and um, she really likes it. But, but in doing so, you know, we bought the house and now there's projects that her and I love to do together. I, she's, she's the brain, she's the designer, I'm mm -hmm. just the grunt. <laughs> and I, you know, give me a nail gun, give me a, you know, a pneumatic nailer, give me a, a tape measure, and I can, I can make whatever she tells me to make. I just don't have the design abilities. But that has helped us, you know, bond together now, uh, working and making this house a home. You know, that catchy phrase. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 Well, I would say that we, like the girls, me, Erin, and Sydney, definitely get her like creativity. I mean, I think you're creative too, but she's more artistic, and you're more like hands-on DIY. Grew up, grew up like building snow sculptures and <laughs> doing other creative projects like building your um, wheelbarrow invention, things like that. That is going to happen, Jenna, just for the record. <laughs> that is going to happen. Yeah, you got to get the patent on that. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so my dad has a whole list of things that he wanted to talk to me about. And before we recorded this, he's like, how is this going to work? Are you, am I going to interview you? And I'm like, well, I think it should kind of be both ways because I think you have some good wisdom and insight. Some some advice for us. So oh. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. <laughs> well, I always have I always have advice. It just may not be good advice. But <laughs> <laughs> so so you started asking me uh, about my job and 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 those types of things. What I still I, don't know what you do. That's okay. We're Most gonna... people. Does anybody actually know what their dad does? <laughs> I don't. I feel like nobody actually knows what their dad does for their job. I mean, like my mom's a teacher. That's pretty self-explanatory. But. But, but here's how I look at it, and I'm going to shoot that answer down, I'm going to shoot that answer really fast, and then I'm going to go back to my questions. But okay. I don't think that's a bad thing, and not that, and, and what I mean by that is I don't bring work home, and not that I don't enjoy what I do, not that I'm not proud of what I do and all that, it pays the bills and, and has taken care, of, taken care of us very well, but I, I don't bring that home because it probably doesn't really interest you too much. And I try and leave it at the door so that when I come home, I'm, I was fully focused or as focused as I possibly could be. So I was in the moment. So that's why I don't talk about work. And it's okay mm -hmm. that you don't know what I do. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so anyhow, so along that line with, with, with work. So you asked me, what do I think about this, this whole podcast and, and, and being an influencer and all that? While I don't necessarily understand it, what's, what's the end game? I mean, what is, what is, if you had your absolute dream state to be in what is that and then maybe you can explain to me how how uh, how you think you're, you're going to get there so that maybe I can help as your dad yeah well obviously growing up an influencer was never a thing and even to this day I don't like to say that I'm an influencer because I just don't think of it in that way I think of myself as more of somebody who is like building a brand and maybe more of an entrepreneur than an influencer in any way because an influencer when I I feel like you hear that word it's maybe more so of like taking pictures and like this elaborate lifestyle. Whereas I feel like now that I'm doing this, I work way harder, way longer because I'm not working for anyone else. And my success is completely dependent on myself. So I definitely didn't see myself starting a podcast. I mean, obviously this is an amazing opportunity that came along um, with what I've been doing, but I see the podcast as a way for me to reach the end goal that I've always had, which is to start a brand. And I talked about this on my fourth episode when I talked about making the decision to quit my corporate job that provided a steady income and maybe got me a lot of connections and stuff, but I wasn't super passionate about it. And I feel like now 
I have a platform that's helping me grow a community, that's helping me connect with people around the entire world, and it's helping me build a brand that I can then make money from and save that I can invest into other opportunities, whether that's hosting events, which I'm doing, and I'm starting to do that to hopefully bring like experiences to other people, to bring people together, to, to actually make an impact, but then also to be able to save that money along the way and all the connections I've made to actually start a tangible fashion line that I've always dreamed of. I mean, you, you know that Aaron and I talked about starting a store together called yeah. Blush. And then I talked about it in the first episode. I was like, why have the store and why sell the designers when I could be the designer? Like, I just feel like, um, I don't know, I have a lot of capabilities. And if I'm already this far at this point in my life, then like why stop there but also why have like one specific thing in mind because I never had a podcast in mind so if I say that I only want to start a brand that's going to limit me to other opportunities that might come about in like the meanwhile you know what I mean yeah I, I guess to me I it's the is that term I have to use like the air quotes brand I don't really if yeah. I think of brand I think of like a brand of shoe or a brand of dress. well yeah I, I and not brand in terms of when you hear Jenna Palak it attaches itself to um, events and, and coordination of, of coordination of those events and it has when you go to them it has a specific meaning because of the name so, yeah I don't think it, the brand isn't Jenna Palak like the, that's just who I am but the brand itself is fun on weekdays and fun on weekdays is just this like idea and could it lead into merch yes because that's like going to come and that is a tangible product like maybe that's what you're used to seeing as a brand but think yeah. about a brand like NASCAR for example they're an experience like mm -hmm. NASCAR, yeah, they have merch and you can buy merch that you can touch and feel and that's something you can purchase. But NASCAR is an experience and that's a memory and that's like an event, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what Fun on Weekdays becomes, but in the future, I would love to have the actual tangible product. Yeah, well, the so whole- So this what is what gets me there, then like I'm down for whatever adventure <laughs> comes from it. <laughs> I'm on board. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. I, I, I mean, I am because that, that's how I find entertainment still living in the small town that I'm in. So regardless of the day of the week, it, it makes total sense to me um, because that's just, that's how I like to live and, and all that. So I'm totally on board with it. And I, I think it's really, I think it's a good idea and I think it's a good mantra to live by. But, you know, what you described with all those extra hours that you're putting in and all that, people don't see that um, because of the, t at least, they, maybe they just don't understand it because yeah. it's it's something that's so new and unique versus I'm opening up a, a new business and you know as a new business owner you have small employees and you're putting in all this extra time that people just expect it but in your in this path that you're taking you know what they see is everything you is the output of all the time and effort that you're putting in and it's usually fun and captivating it's like it just looks like you're having a good time so so I would think, and, and uh, well, I, in fact, I know because I've seen some of the posts. And of yeah. course, as your father, I want to track these people down. But <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but but I see I see people hating on you, and and obviously, as your dad, it bothers me because you know they're they're not they're not loving you as much as, as I do, of course. But <laughs> but they're hating on you because they don't understand it, or they just think that it's 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 smoke and mirrors, and and you're not you're not working because it, everything you're doing is associated to you know positivity and all that so how do you how do you compartmentalize that so that you I mean how, I mean how do you how do you deal with that let alone compartmentalizing and all that just what what does that do to you when you're trying to build what you're trying to build well I feel like the number one most hurtful thing that people say to me and I don't think that it's like a hate comment it's not anything that's like it's not saying you gained weight, which I mean, people have said that too, like, oh, you you gained weight, you look different, or I don't like your hair that color, or hate your outfit, like things about my appearance. That's totally different. I feel like those things I can brush off and I can make a joke out of, but the things that actually hurt me are when people question my character or my integrity, or they say things like, you're not relatable anymore, you're not genuine, because now you're living this lifestyle, and you're not working, like, of course you're having fun, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, like, I mean, we talked about this last night when we were at dinner, you're like the saying that you're never working if you love what you do, like that's just not true because you, you're you still working. Even though it's something that you enjoy to do, it's still work. And without doing the work, nothing's gonna get done. You're never gonna progress. But I feel like what people don't see is like, it, for example, yesterday, I was flying from um, LA back to Austin 
I woke up at 5 a.m., got on a flight, got back to Austin, and I had like three hours. I had to film two videos before I left. And like, yeah, filming a video might not sound, it might sound fun, it might not sound like work, but it is, it is work. Yeah. It like, it's creative, it's, it takes energy out of you. Like it maybe not, it's maybe not like sitting at a desk and making spreadsheets, but it's still work, it's just creative. And then from there I had to drive four hours to come here and we were gonna record an episode last night. Obviously I was like mentally drained, so you, you can't like, you can't be 100% when you are doing so much. And I feel like it's not often that I always show the behind the scenes of what I'm actually doing. You just see that I'm making videos or I'm doing try on hauls or whatever, but it's not just doing TikToks anymore. Now it's like the podcast and now it's trying to find guests and now it's trying to like make scripts and have actual meaningful conversation, uploading those files, editing that all down, uploading it, getting it approved so it can go live every single Tuesday. That's really, really hard to do. Yeah. Like a turnaround for for a week is a lot. So there's that. And then on top of that, trying to make merch. So we've been sourcing like different wholesale um, places and then trying to figure out fulfillment. So it's like, okay, well, who's going to package these orders? How are we actually going to put this online? Who's going to take the pictures to even put the pictures online to market that? And then what kind of packaging is that going in? Then you have to design the packaging and then somebody has to actually send it out. And so that's merch. And then you have like the event part of it, which is, okay, ticketing, finding a venue, hiring caterers, bartenders, security, all of those things that goes into it. And I feel like you just see the output and the end product. But, and that's something that I, I try to take people along the process of, but obviously with those types of things, um, with announcements and stuff you can't really show the behind the scenes as you're working on it so i'm excited for people to see what i've actually been working on for the past like month and a half straight yeah but i think so i mean what you're what you're describing to me makes total sense and as as you're as you're walking through that with me um you know one of the things you and i were talking about last night was you know that the whole you know the concept i call them haters i don't know what else <laughs> call, i don't know what else to call them but i mean people that that think that you're living this charmed lifestyle or or things are being given to you and I think, you know, I, I guess if you're asking maybe for some advice um, in, mm -hmm. any, in any job, it's not a matter of, it's actually not a matter of how, um, how people see how hard you're working. It's actually pe people being able to see the end results and making, and you being able to project a way that you handled, in, handled it in such a way that you didn't have to walk them down the path of it describing tooth and nail of exactly everything you had to do to get to this point. If you can show them the the end result in in a positive light, you know if they're interested in, in wanting to know how you got there, then then great you talk about it. But not talking about it and just proving yourself and showing the end result that then puts on a, a different it has a different look and feel to it because they see the positive energy of you you're able to do something and it looks without, easy without whining about it and yeah. and, and all that. So t you know talking about how hard you're working, yeah, or making sure people see that part of it actually kind of uh it kind of takes away from the positive end result of what you did to get there and you made it you know kind of look easy um, yeah. not that i'm saying anything is easy especially with what you're doing but, yeah but well i get what you mean because i mean that that totally makes sense but i guess in my in my mind the way that i've had so much success is by sharing like the behind the scenes i guess of my entire life and so I think for me, when I share details like, oh, this is what I'm working on and I can help like bring people into that yeah. process and have their opinions and everything, it feels a lot more like it's something that we're all creating together rather than just like something that I'm taking and running with. Yeah. And I think too, when people say that I'm like living this lifestyle or I'm not working or whatever, it makes me want to share that so much more because I'm like, no, I really am. And I just want you to see that I am just like any other person. It's just... A, it's just a different job than I was doing before. Yeah, you know, no, I, like I mean, it makes sense. I mean, and I, and I know that you have people that are following you because they they see what you do and they're trying to learn from you. So mm -hmm. you know, getting back to your teacher mm -hmm. <laughs> teacher lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that it, I guess that is something that um, you are sharing with other people to help them. You know, at least 
not necessarily crack the code, but at least get some insight yeah. as to what it takes or, or how you've gone down this path to say, all right, well, yeah. I have not tried that before, maybe I should, or I don't even know where to start. So I, I get it, that makes sense. Well, I think it's a lot more, it's, it's a lot more sharing with other people, like this is what I did, I, I graduated college, I moved to a new city, blah, blah, and this is how I got from point A to point B, and if you wanna do something similar, point proven that like you can go out there and do that, and I wanna be the person to motivate you and inspire you and encourage you to make that leap of faith, but it's not, like whining about it, it's just being truthful that there are so many obstacles that come along the way. And while my life might look glamorous, there are so many things that I struggle with. And I think that I could do a better job of sharing those in a way that isn't whining or complaining about my life, but just yeah. being like honest and relatable and like vulnerable, I guess, because that's why people like me. Yeah. And so no. if I take that away, then I feel like I, I am just another influencer that's just sharing the highlights. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And it kind of goes back to what you said before when people are just posting positive videos or, or mm -hmm. posting videos of, of me doing something nice for somebody else. I mean, it, it, it goes back to just, you know, almost putting up a front and only letting them see what, you know, what positive things you're doing without really the behind the scenes so that they, they get it. I, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it makes sense to me. Yeah, but I understand your point too. It's like, because you only really ever share the, like the great points of your life that you want to share with people on Facebook. My dad loves Facebook. I have never seen a guy post more sunset pictures in my life than this man. Um, but you're always sharing like things that you're doing and yeah, you know, talking but, about the positive parts of life. Well, but that's just that's just personality. So whether it's work or, or personal, I I choose to be a personal or, or a, a positive person. Mm -hmm. Anybody anybody can be a complainer. I don't get into politics. I don't get into really religion. Nothing like that on Facebook. It's just not the place. Mm -hmm. But if if people want to view me and social media as as having this other lifestyle. Of, of, of having a, a perfect life. There is no perfect life, just like I said, there is no perfect marriage, but I want to project a positive outlook on things, not positive on me and look at me, it's positive. I woke up this morning and I saw the sunrise and while I didn't capture everything in the sunrise with the ducks and the fish and, mm -hmm. and all that, you get to see the big picture of the sun coming up and it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing moment that it helps me self-reflect and all that and there's just some people that you know, A, they, they, they can't get up in the morning and, and walk down there and do it. B, they don't want to go and do it alone or they're, you know, dealing with something else that for some reason they're not seeing it. So if they get to see one of my posts and, and feel good and positive about it, maybe tomorrow they'll see the sunrise. If not, then I'll post another one. They can see <laughs> the next day. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of, I liked that. Okay. That was kind of. Is that, that your joker? Yeah, a little okay, bit. I, I was like. Hmm. <laughs> I it's okay. Don't worry about it. All right. So you want to hear my concept of, of sunrises versus sunsets? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you did you read my mind? How did you know that what? I was going to ask you to say I don't, that? I don't want you busting on me about the sunrise and sunset. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think is your difference between right. the sunrise and sunset then? Okay. Well, you guys make fun of me about all these pictures. Why do I do it? Well, I do it because I live in Ohio and <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't get a lot of sun and, and all that, but uh, you know, in the wintertime we get a lot of snow. So. To me, I mean, one of the reasons why is that it helps me get through the winter time. So as soon as the snow, spart, the snow starts falling, oh, I almost did like a like a, a bad word there. Um, <laughs> as soon as the snow starts falling, I can at least go back through in, in January, December, March, whatever, when it, and 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 I can see some nice, calming, warm, fuzzy feeling uh, pictures. But to me, I am um, I like sunrises and sunsets. I like sunrises better because. You, to me, there that's the start of the day, and and I like to think about things to come and how I want to manage my day, and and it, I'm looking forward to the upcoming day or whatever the case is. Right, sunset is it's like the time of reflection of of you know embracing the day or dealing with the day, even if it was not a good day. But you're you're kind of winding down and you're thinking about things that you know maybe coulda woulda shoulda. So. I guess to me, because I'm a more positive guy, the sunrise is more about what is yet to come versus reflection of what I didn't do and I need to do it tomorrow or I didn't do something huh. as good as I could have. I like that. So for anyone listening, I guess um, an idea for you to do this week is go watch the sun sunrise. <laughs> you could do that. Where do you prefer to watch the sunrise from? Oh my God, that's a no-brainer, Jenna. On the water. Of course. I, any, any, any water. I, I mean, one of my favorite pictures is like when the water is like really calm and the sun is coming up and I get like the double reflection from mm -hmm. the sky and then the water. If I can get like the right, the right angle, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. We live on Lake Erie, by the way. Um, so one of, yeah. one of these days, we'll get we'll get you guys a place in Lake Travis, hopefully. Oh, that'd closer. Be, that'd be great. Would, closer they, to me. Will they have a beach that I can rake? Because that is um, kind of, that's, that's like my morning routine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys have like a community. <laughs> oh, Sh- yeah, sure. This, that? Yeah. Okay, so we so we live in this in this uh, lakefront community. We are not right on the water, but it's a five minute walk. It's a cute we, little ranch. Yeah, yeah. Again, we, we're not going to talk about the house itself. Yeah. I love the house. I really love the location because it's right on the on the water. But we have this beach that um, it it comes and goes depending on uh, the the weather and the storms and all that because the sand is just always moving. But sometimes the um, the the, the beach is so small, I could probably rake it with a fork. <laughs> but, but there's other times it might take me like a half an hour. And it's like my little zen garden. So as, <laughs> as, the, as the sun's coming up, I get to rake the beach. I do like these little designs. And sometimes if there's enough sand like at the bottom of the stairs, I could do like a smiley face and say smile or, or something like that. Uh-huh. And then, then I like to kind of take my rake and hide it. Well, now people know who does it, so it's not a surprise. But... I, when I first started, I would hide my rake and I would sit on the bench with my coffee and just watch people go down the <laughs> stairs and look at the beach and nobody wanted to step on the beach and put their footprints in it because they didn't want to mess up my designs because I would like put in the design. So that was like fun. So <laughs> it made people smile and it was positive. So there you go. Didn't somebody post a picture of it too on Facebook and they're like, oh, this made my day. Who did, who did this? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, mean I, have, I, of course, posted many of them. <laughs> oh, well, of course. You're not going to rake a cute design and not post about it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a Christmas gift idea, just a slight plug, is maybe like some new uh, sand raking tool or something. I don't know. Okay. All I have is like a rake and I can only twist and turn it so many ways. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe like one of those golf course ones? I don't know. But oh, anyhow. Okay. Yeah, I, I might know somebody who could do that. Okay. 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 <laughs> you have to disguise it though, because otherwise I'm going to know what it is because I just said it out loud. Yeah, I know. Okay. You just spoke it into existence. Yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, that's just, again, it goes back to me having a, a wanting to start my day in a, in a, in a positive way, and, and maybe somebody's going to see it and it's going to make their day. I like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. We, okay, you have another so one of my other questions. About? So, um, oh, we talked about the haters. So, let's talk about the motivation. So, okay. When you know, I know how busy you are. We have not even talked about how you're going to get home for the holidays, when you're coming mm-hmm. home, and and all that. So I know you're very motivated to, to make you know make a lot happen. But um, how do you stay motivated, and how do you kind of keep thinking of new ways to recreate um, what you're doing so that it doesn't become repetitive and and not relevant? Well, I think that for the most part. I mean, there are definitely days where I am in a rut. Like there, more recently, I would say probably before I went to LA, I was just kind of like burnt out. Like, you know, I called you and mommy when I (laughs) called you and Lynn, I called you and mom from New York. And yes, I had a great week in New York going to events and stuff, but I just kind of lost motivation. I was just so burnt out mentally that I didn't really have that much passion to like put into my work. And I think that it kind of showed as well in like the things that I was producing and I was falling behind on deadlines or I wasn't committing to things and I had a lot of empty promises and then I realized that I needed to just like calm down like take a second back and be alone and then surround myself with people who bring that out of me and (laughs) I I I say this a lot but I really do think that being like such good friends with Connor and Mike has helped motivate me a lot Connor boy (laughs) Yeah. yeah. We're not going to talk about him, right? No, we've talked okay. about him enough. We don't need to talk okay. about him. Okay. But I feel like they are really good motivation because they push me. And they're that person that, like, I mean, two weeks ago, he was like, Jenna, you are falling behind on things. Like, if if you had a friend who was sitting around and you watched them, like, complain about their life or they weren't following through with things they said they were going to do, wouldn't you want to be that friend that was like, what are you doing? Get your shit together. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to let my friend, like, just, you know. But, but some of that, but, but isn't that some of that self-induced? Yeah, so. no, and for the most part, what I realized is, like, you can only get so much motivation from other people, but you have to find it in yourself because if you rely on other people, then you're only going to go so far. And you have to find, like, self-motivation to keep yourself passionate. But I think a lot of my motivation, too, comes from, like, the people that, that follow me and support me who send me nice messages and are like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how much your podcast has helped me. And it helps me conceptualize the fact that like, I don't just sit behind a microphone and my words actually carry value 
in people's lives or people that message me. And my favorite thing is when they're like, oh my gosh, I listened to your podcast and I've been in this job that I hate and I finally had the courage to quit it and I applied for a dream job and I got it. I've had probably like 20 people message me that. And I feel like the, it's always those moments that are like, okay, that makes all of those hard days where I'm like, ugh, there's so much pressure. It makes it all worth it. And I feel like that's where the motivation comes from. Yeah. But it's really important that I like take the days off when I do need them because I just I get so burnt out and then it carries into the next day. Yeah. Well, I, that I mean, it all makes sense. But I, but when you call us from from New York, you know, that was not about to me at least. That's not what I was hearing. It was not about motivation. Yeah. It was like, that you overcommitted and you yeah. got backed up and that you can't overcommitting and and getting burned out is you can't tie that to motivation. You can be as motivated as you want. I could be as motivated to 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 start training for a, a marathon, but if I get if I get tired after like the first mile, <laughs> I mean, I'm very motivated to finish it, but if I don't have the time and the skills to do it, it's just not going to happen. It's yeah. not that day. And you just hit a break, you hit a wall and you hit a breaking point and then it's like I want to get on a plane. I want to I want to get the heck out of here. So yeah, that's um, a good point. I would, uh, yeah, I guess, well, you saying that, it's not that I lost my motivation, it's th- it's that I lost my energy and my, like, actual capacity to follow through with things I said I was going to do. Right. But you, it wasn't, you the, the, it wasn't the motivation. motivation. Yeah. yeah. You used motivation. I know, now. but now that you said that, it made me realize, like, I was still See? just as motivated, you know, but I guess it's all about the mindset. So, really, it wasn't that I was less motivated, because obviously I still have this end goal, but right. Right. it was just that. You know, need to maybe commit to a few less things. Okay. But I always say that that's one of my biggest downfalls is just saying yes to everything. Yeah, you get that from your mother. I know, I know, yeah. I know. Um, well, time management—that's you know that's it's that's so a big uh, that's a big thing, no doubt about it. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Do we want to switch gears a little bit on something that not, not work related? Yeah. Okay. So, um, what are your pet peeves? It could be work, it could be people, it could be, what, oh my God. what, what are your pet peeves other than people not being nice? Okay, one of my biggest pet peeves, and Aaron is the exact perfect example of this, is oh, just, Aaron, my, my sister Aaron. I feel like we are very different in the fact that I am very impulsive, I know exactly what I want to do, I know exact. if I see a shirt at the store, I know that I like it. I don't need anybody else to tell me that I need to buy it. When people wait so long to make a decision, they're just indecisive and like, oh my gosh, it drives me nuts. Or when people ask a million questions, I'm just like, I, sometimes, I, and this is maybe something that I'm not very good at, is I just don't answer. And so sometimes when I'm talking to people and I just don't want to answer a question, I just don't, I just don't say anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> like it kind of comes across <laughs> as ignoring, but it just ugh, it grinds my gears when people ask a million questions. Like Google it. I don't know. Well, sometimes, I mean, maybe because you're the star that you are, maybe they're just trying to figure out a way to break the ice and talk to you and they just... They just think asking questions is the easiest thing to do than No, I talking. I don't know. No, I mean more <laughs> so like... For, not, not, not narking on Aaron or anything, but when Aaron was in Austin and Poor we're Aaron. like, what are we doing today? Well, when are we, where are we going to go eat breakfast? Where should, when should we leave? Should we walk there or should we scooter there? Or how much do you think it's going to cost? Or what do you think that I should wear? I'm like, oh my gosh, just make a decision for yourself. It drives me nuts. Okay. Well, part of that, <laughs> so, but part of that is, and, and your mother is I the sound same like such it. a brat, but it's different when well, it's Aaron. Well, okay. Aaron, we're sorry, honey. We're not bagging on you either. <laughs> the only person we haven't picked on yet is Sydney. <laughs> oh my God. But, but, Sydney okay. Sydney does her own thing though. Like she, she doesn't really ask for, for any like questions or advice, you know? Yeah. She's, but, 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 but going back to what you just said, you are very different than Aaron because you are a very impulsive person. Yeah, Aaron no, totally. is a planner like me, and I, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of somewhere in between. I could, we could go somewhere this afternoon, and and maybe we're gonna go see like the cattle, you know, the, the cattle, cattle, cattle walk or whatever they're doing. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, let's just stay here tonight because it's so cool, like living in the moment and all that. Mm-hmm. But um, Aaron is a planner, so she likes having things mapped out so that she gets everything accomplished oh that she has mapped out. But She's trying to be. She's trying to be more spontaneous. Yeah. Just like mommy, Lynn is trying to be more spontaneous. <laughs> well, there's two parts to it. You can either be really prepared and really organized, and that could be a really great thing because you like you are prepared for those instances. But I think to an extent, and that could backfire when you are just impulsive like me, and it does backfire a lot. But that 
when it does backfire, it often leads to other opportunities and other things that are just as fun and just like living in the moment. There are only so many things in life that you can plan. I, I agree. No, yeah. you're, you're preaching to the choir. That's, I know. <laughs> that's, that's, the way, that's, not, that's the way you're my daughter. I get it. I, I'm like that. Um, but it is funny that you mentioned the, the whole indecision. That kills me. Like, uh, yeah, like today, just, I mean, yeah. we're, we're trying to get a, we're just at a juice bar. And she's standing there looking at the menu, like reading every single ingredient. I'm like, it, okay, well, let's go. Let's get into the podcast. Let's well, go. it annoys but, me just as much. When I am indecisive, it really <laughs> annoys me. I annoy myself. And then it bothers me. But another thing, this is not just like character <laughs> at all, but when people chew with their mouth open or they smack on their gum and you're, say you're like sitting in a car or you're sitting next to them at a restaurant, oh, it's just so, so horrible. It's a huge pet peeve. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what one of mine is? I know what yours is. It's being late. And that is my biggest downfall Bingo, right on the nose i there i don't know who ever said being fashionably late is fashionable it, that makes no sense to me that that means it that, is when you're wearing these matching t-shirts though <laughs> well yeah we can we can show up late just to make sure everybody sees us in the room but i i but i mean because you're trying to make a statement maybe once or something like that because it's something so unique such as these shirts but to do it all the time and to have a reputation to be showing up late that's just that that's not that's not cool I mean, I, I would much rather be the person that gets there on time, maybe even, you know, heaven forbid, like a couple minutes early, and I, like, start the vibe of the place and get conversations so that other people are joining me. Because when you, when you, when you show up late, you're the one trying to, you're, you're like, hey, mommy, mommy, you know, <laughs> like, you're, you're trying to break into something that's already started, and now you're the outsider. You should be the one that starts it, and then you bring them in. It's just, you're kind of controlling. Yeah. So... I know, I, I really need to work on that. I've been doing a lot better <laughs> lately. Um, I, maybe I haven't proven that to you because I was late to Fort Worth and I was a little late this morning getting ready. But for the rest of the weekend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on time. It, it, it was worth it. it yeah, was, exactly. It was, it was worth it. Exactly. So, so maybe this is a, you asked me for some advice. So okay. maybe from a, a work perspective. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, no, yes, it's not like okay. high, high, high intention. <laughs> okay. but, but, you know, how we talked about before, like the communication stuff. Yeah. Um, Work-wise, one of my major pet peeves is, is people hiding behind the instant message and the texting and, and all that stuff versus just picking up the phone. I mean, there is going back to starting relationships and, and misinterpretation of tone or intent and all that. When you know you start seeing all those 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 text messages and all that, it's like, can't we just talk? And then you come up with reasons why you can't talk. Well, if you can't talk because you're so busy, chances are you can't really text and and take the time to text the right message either. So just stop until you can find the right time and then mm -hmm. just pick up the phone. Yeah, the amount yeah. of time that you spend typing. Oh, and I'm so guilty of this. I'm pretty fast though. Oh, are you? You got you got, you got fast. That's from my, from, my black, from my BlackBerry days. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh, what a throwback to that. Um, but the amount of time that it takes to type a, t a text, you probably could have already had the conversation and hung up the phone. But I will say, I think that a lot of people prefer to text because you get out the feelings that you maybe hold back or you get too scared to say or like maybe they get lost in the conversation and there's not a good moment for you to say how you actually feel. I'm thinking to like relationship standpoint, if you're maybe fighting with someone and you're voicing how you feel about something, you can get those words across and make sure that you state what you want to say before the conversation ends in person yeah. but to your point yeah like the message can totally be misconstrued based on however you want to interpret it the tone i mean we used to do that i suppose you know talking old school we used to just write it down on a piece of paper and fold it up and yeah. slide it slide it underneath the desk but i mean it's just taking a whole new level but anyhow okay so I guess the only, the only we've kind of gone through a lot of my items. So the other the other question that I had though was around the make good choices. Okay, so I talked about this in um, my solo episode. I think it was number ten, and it was my twenty four questions. Somebody asked me. It was what are your mottos or what are two pieces of advice that you've grown up with? And I said that one of my mottos is make it happen, which is on my ne necklace, and the other one is make good choices, which is what you've told us. Since we were little, every time you would drop us off at like a bonfire or going to a party or something, always say make good choices or dropping us off at college, wherever. Uh -huh. So you can explain now what, what the intent is behind that phrase. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of twofold. One was for all those reasons to make sure that you're making good choices so you don't get yourself 
into trouble yeah. or you know you, you you make you know you just make a choice on the fly and then you regret it but um, you know as I thought about this podcast and all that and and I've and that's not just the first time either but I think about that, that term make good choices it, it it does change over time when you're younger you know you're 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 kind of just doing things on your own you don't have any accountability other than your parents getting after you or whatever but mm -hmm. as as an adult um, kind of going back to like the positivity and not being indecisive and all that, there is a difference between making a good choice and making a best choice. When you're an adult, um, making a good choice, to me, a good choice means that, hey, it's a good option and let's run with it and go with it. Making the best choice, to me, it, it, it infers that there's a lot of deliberation and, and sometimes overthinking. So it's not like when you're buying, like when you're buying a car, you're buying, you're making the best choice. You've done your research and this is the best choice, but that takes time. I like you, like I like being a little bit more spontaneous. I like, hey, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go and do it. Otherwise, if I'm waiting to make the best <laughs> choice, time goes on, you know, people get mad or I miss an opportunity and I'm like, man, I should have done that and I didn't. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I think about the make good choices. And I think you girls have all made good choices. Yeah. You've made some not good choices, but sometimes sometimes not making good choices has actually, you know, worked out to be the better and, and all yeah. that. But um, Well, yeah. when I explained it too, I said I kind of interpret it as it doesn't have to be a good choice to other people, but if you're proud of that choice and it aligns with your values and your morals, then that is a good choice. People don't have to agree with the choice that you made, but if you can stand by it and you're proud of it, then that's all that really matters. And it, like, make a choice. I, I said on it, I don't even remember exactly what the wording was, but, like, make a choice that your parents are going to be proud of. And then I thought, and I'm like, Aww. no. I mean, yeah, of course, like, look for your parents for validation and everything and for their approval. But also at the end of the day, like, is this something that 10 years from now I'm going to look back on and I'm still going to stand by because it was, it was a good choice in the moment. And I feel like I, for the most part, have. But also those times where I haven't are the only reason why you grow and you learn things as a person. So it's kind of also essential that you make some bad choices along the way. Yeah, yeah I get it. So, okay. I, I just liked, I liked seeing the phrase. I liked seeing it on the graduation cap. I think, is yeah. it you or Aaron? Aaron put, make good, Aaron put make, she mm -hmm. put made good choices right. on her graduation cap. Right. And my merch, one of my stickers says make good choices. I know. I need I need like that shirt or that hat or something. Cause, yeah. Yeah, that's it hasn't come out yet, but I'll I'll send one your way. All right. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to end on, and not that I want to go back to work at all, but you have been working from home for twenty four how long? Twenty eight years? Uh, uh twenty I think twenty three, twenty four, something like that. And a lot of people that are in my, you know, shoes, when I started my first job out of college, I was working from home and it was my first job ever. So it's not only like the difficulty of getting acclimated to it in an actual career, but it was also like, I don't have any coworkers around me. And a lot of people are still working from home. So how do you maintain that balance? And how do you like not go stir crazy being in the same environment? And also along the lines of that, like how do you have fun? Okay, well, I mean, I got a lot of different a lot of different answers depending on the day. Well, I had but, so many questions put together in there. There was like five questions in one. I know. So first and foremost, uh, working from home, it it does allow some flexibility if you're if you're disciplined. I think that's that is fundamental to anything. So if you don't have the discipline to differentiate um, your priorities at work of when you need to be working, regardless of whether you're sitting on your couch, you're sitting in a really extravagant homemade office or whatever, um, you have to know the boundaries to, to be able to distinguish what is work time and what is personal time. And you need to figure out a way to, to hold yourself accountable to, to delineate between those two because you're always gonna be walking past that laptop. You can't have a home office with never have a home office or, or your laptop sitting in your bedroom because that's just every time you're when you're in your bedroom you, you're gonna be looking at it it's not anxiety to mention, inducing yeah and then mentally you're gonna you know, like if you're watching tv then you go into the bedroom and you're like oh i see that laptop i need to send one more email and it's a it's a distraction so mm -hmm. you you have to be able to first of all stay you know stay focused on what is work what is you know what is personal time um make sure that you're able to carve out the space itself so that when you close the door to the office or whatever it is gone and you only go back there when you absolutely need to 
going back in there multiple times during the day, it's just that trigger of, you know, I, I need to do one more thing. And you're never able to step away from it. Well, I mean, it's like an office. Like when you leave your office, you're not going back there at 11 p.m. when no one else is at the office. No one's going to let you in. So, yeah. but it is really hard when your life revolves around your computer and your phone and you're spending so much time on it on your own personal use that it's hard to just cut it off. So do you have any advice of like how you've learned to do that over the years? Because it's one thing to say like you need to set a boundary, but how, how do you do that? Well, I mean, I don't have like the secret sauce to that <laughs> necessarily, but I mean, and I'm not saying that when, when you call the day, you don't think about work. That's not realistic either. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, most people, most people I know, unless you're, unless you're like the, the, the toll gate guy on the turnpike <laughs> and you have a bad day because somebody gave you like a Canadian coin or something. I mean, <laughs> that is like the only job I can think of that when you leave your day, you're done. But I mean, everyone thinks about their about their work when they're done with their work day. That means that they're an engaged associate and they're thinking about how tomorrow am I going to make tomorrow better or address whatever the issue is at hand. But that doesn't mean that I have to be looking at my laptop or have my laptop sitting next to me while I'm watching TV when that one idea might come by during mm -hmm. a commercial break. Yeah. Um, but I, I think for me, what what has uh, has worked for me. I'm a social guy. Um, you might not have figured it out on this call because I, I, I'm like talking really fast and stuttering a couple of times. But I have learned that I need I need to disconnect from work mentally and and physically. So while I'm in the house, I, I move around where I work just because I can, and and you know everything to me is an email and conference call and all that. But I realize that I have got to get out of the house. I have to have some social interaction. I'll buy I'll buy a loaf of bread even if I don't need it, a gallon of milk mm -hmm. if I don't need it. Just I have to get out of the house. I have to see somebody and talk to somebody because my life is nothing but you know uh, you know online communications. I need my social fix. So mm -hmm. if I'm not getting a social fix and and seeing somebody and and hearing them face to face and me making them laugh or smile or whatever. Mm -hmm you know where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take my fork or my rake, I'm gonna rake the sand, <laughs> I'm gonna just look at the water. I will break in between my conference calls, even if I have like 15 minutes, it takes five minutes there. Mm -hmm. I can watch the water for five minutes, and five minutes back, I just, I just got that mental um, and physical disconnection so that I can stay recharged so when I sit back and I dial into the next you know, three or four hour meeting, I'm, I at least feel as though I, I had a little bit of a break, otherwise, I could. I used to sit in my chair, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, and maybe get up and go to the bathroom. If not, mm -hmm. it just the, the day just got away from me, and it's just not healthy. Yeah. Look, look at me. It's not healthy. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want the excuse to be. And I liked earlier in the episode you said too that like after you're done working, you don't carry that over to like when we would have dinner as a family. I mean. Lynn, my mom, would talk about her work day, her students, and all that. But I feel like you really do just like don't talk about it anymore because you don't let your job be the only thing that revolves around your life. Well, mm -hmm. it, it goes back to, and, and it's just my job, and maybe it's different for you or, or somebody else. Mm -hmm. My job does not define who I am. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's a means to an end. I, I, I like my job, I'm good at my job. I, you know, I think I might inspire some other people to do their job better you know, when we're peers and, and they're working and doing things for me. That's all good and that's expected in your, you know, in your job. But I, 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 I just, again, I can't kind of keep them separate. And what I try and inflect or, or, or inject into my workday is some sense of humor, some sense of, of realistic um, perspective of, look, no, we are not brain surgeons. We're not doing any heart surgery. Nobody is going to be dying today. So I might try and inject some kind of humor or just kind of get everybody to calm down. But, you know, I don't bring the work aspect into my personal life other than maybe in some cases trying to um, help walk through the, the, the process of how to accomplish something, breaking it down into certain tasks and all that. But other than that, I just don't, I just don't talk about work. Mm -hmm. Okay, well now that we've talked about work a lot and we're gonna wrap things up because my dad and I have a very busy weekend oh, to have yeah. fun together, <laughs> I wanted to leave on some ways that we as a family have fun and maybe ideas for you to connect with your parents, or your siblings, or whoever it may be. Um, and the holidays are coming up, so this is perfect because we have so many traditions that I wanna talk about. Oh. So the first one being every year we time ourselves to put up our Christmas tree. And we make it into a whole thing. We put. What's the CD that we play? Oh my gosh! Um, 
I'm totally drawing a blank. I know, me too. What is it? uh, it's, it's like a classic music CD. I'm like, it's, it's a country one, right? I don't know. I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> we make it a whole day out of it. We decorate the house, we put on the music, we decorate the tree, and Kenny we Rogers, time ourselves. Sorry. Kenny Rogers, yes. <laughs> So, and that's a way every year, and it's just funny because we record it and we see every year if we can do it faster and faster. And that's a way that we just bond every year. We know that we're going to regardless of where we live. Like we all try to get home for that. Another thing we do is we used to do a, a cookie decorating contest with the grandparents and the boyfriends. If we ever have a boyfriend, they get to come. They get to wear our, our apron. Mm-hmm. And that's a good way that we bond with our family. You get to what watch. Is, you get to watch. You know that boyfriend lick his fingers and then decorate cookies, <laughs> and you know which one not to eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be bringing anyone this year, though. So good. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, what are some other What are some other things that we do for fun? Well, I mean, you know, my ultimate. Yes. My ultimate idea. I wanted to leave that for you to share, though. Do you want me to do that now, or do you want me yeah. to come up with something different? No, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Okay. So to me. This is like a standing joke as well, but I literally still do this. Um, <laughs> I did not do it today in the in the motel room, in the hotel room. I really wish I did. But every time the girls come home, then they ask, you know, what are we, you know, what are we doing for dinner? Then what are we doing tonight? I'm like, well, we're gonna do this, this, and this, and then we're gonna then we're gonna make a fort. So <laughs> every time, every time we're home, <laughs> he always wants to make a fort, and so now it's it's kind of a joke, but it really is. You love to do that. Absolutely. Because I think, we grew up doing that. I think that I think that should be like the number one thing. So think about this. Like it first of all, it's just fun to do. Like if I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I was looking around the hotel room last night to figure out how I was gonna do it. <laughs> but just making a fort, it's just it's A, it, it's just kinda creation it's kinda creative. Yeah. Right? And it's fun and it's something kinda silly, but it brings you back to your childhood and you can do like get your phone on and do like shadow puppets and, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But I mean that's that's I don't know. It just to me it's just something we used to do. Um, when you guys were little kids, and it was mm-hmm. just it's a really good time. But I actually I have a really funny story about making a fort recently. Do you want me to tell that one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> so again, I already shared with you guys how excited I am at some point to be a grandfather. I, a friend of mine was selling. Do you remember those big those big parachute um, things you played with when you kid? You you pick in, it up in the air and then you stand inside and let the let the ceiling come down. It's like an elementary it's like, school. Yeah, an elementary. It's like a cloud game or whatever whatever yeah. you did. Anyhow. A friend of mine had one. She was selling it at a garage sale, so I bought it. I'm like, oh, the grandkids are gonna love this. She's like, what grandkids? I'm like, just hold it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Aaron came home. Was it? No, it was, it was me. Was you did it, it you? in my oh, room. Oh yeah, it was in your room. Yeah, right. I have a video of it. <laughs> so, so I set up in Jenna's room. She came home from college. It was my 21st birthday. It was the day after my 21st <laughs> birthday. I was so hungover. I had my bar crawl the <laughs> night before. And you set it up in my room. You put yeah. it in the literal lampshade of my bedroom, and it was an entire I, fort in my whole room. I know it was so cool. It looked really cool because the colors were really bright and all that. And then um, I left the light on so that you could see. <laughs> when it came in. So, so when we went under your bedroom, it just smelled like burning something. And I didn't realize that the, that I guess I had the, the the parachute too close to the light bulbs, and it started cooking the parachute. So now at some point. When we get the parachute out of the bin, when we have grandkids, when we do the parachute game, it may not fly very well because there's this melted piece of parachute <laughs> <laughs> right, in, right in the middle. But I mean, it still will make a really good fort. If I was really, really on my game, I would have brought it here and I would have had it set up in this motel, in this hotel room. So, that would you would have had to shame. add another checked bag or something because it's huge. No, it's not. I would have I would have put it I would have carried it in my backpack. I would have. <laughs> but my dad is huge on building forts. <laughs> I actually did that with my roommates in college um, during quarantine. We built a huge fort in our living room. We set it up for like a week straight, and we would watch a different movie every night. And then every night it was like someone else's turn to make a a different snack, and it was just a fun way. Like I don't know. It, it, it's not going anywhere. It's free, and it, like you said, it's creative, and you just bond. Um, and then other things, I don't know. You're part of a bowling league with my mom now, mm-hmm. so yeah. you guys do that during the week on Thursdays. That is on Saturday nights. It's a, oh, every, every other Saturday night. Oh, I thought it was on a weekday. No, no. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't really go on brand then. No, that does not. You could do bowling not. on a Thursday. I mean, though. on Tuesdays though, we do go to the bowling alley, Rich okay. Lanes. Okay. Largest bowling alley in Fairport, Ohio. <laughs> nice little plug there. <laughs> There's actually eight lanes, right? There is eight lanes. Yeah. And, and maybe like 500 and residents. That's where, <laughs> and that's where you, he actually bowled a 300 game. Twice. Yeah, and he has a 300 mm-hmm. ring, ring, bowling I ring. I do, but you know, 
I'm just gonna share this with you. If any of you ever bowl a 300 game, don't wear the ring because anyone that's like a really good bowler will make fun of you because it's just like wearing your class ring, you know, like it's your like, high school class ring when you're like 65. <laughs> it's like, like, dude, you got a ring, big deal. I have like five of them if I kept them all. So yeah, I, I got very embarrassed very fast. So now I just kind of pull it out for like, I don't know, maybe a Halloween costume or something. <laughs> it's like costume jewelry now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that we do we do go up to that. I I kind of lost track because I get all excited. So we do go up there on Tuesday nights for like a Queen of Hearts drawing. So that is okay. that is definitely a fun on uh, weekdays thing. Mm -hmm. um, we go to the drawing on Tuesday nights and Taco Tuesday and maybe some yeah. drinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love that. But, any other any other things that you guys do? Oh my gosh, during the week? Well, during the week, no one. We've been really busy with the house. I've been yeah. doing a lot of yeah. I've been of really busy, projects, so. but. I mean, it was a Friday yesterday when you got here, so unfortunately I'm not hanging out with my dad on a weekday, but we are going to wrap up this episode, and I can only do that by asking you to suggest one thing for them to do for fun. So would that be building a fort? I think building a fort okay. still, I think that still has merit. Yeah, yeah, I do too. So if you build a fort this week, tag me on Instagram. <laughs> I will have to forward it to my dad and he'll probably post it on his Facebook for all of his friends to see. Mm -hmm. And if any of my dad's friends are listening to this episode, um, thanks for tuning in. I'm sure he appreciates it. I do as well. And we're going to head out so we can go have some fun together and Bond as daddy-daughter time. All right. Well, this was fun, honey. I'm so proud of you. And uh, oh, thank this is you. a good time. It's going to be a good weekend. And uh, if uh, if you get a chance. His hang eyes out, are sparkling right now because they're starting to <laughs> tear up. So you turn the camera <laughs> off. But uh, try and find some time for your mom and dad. They love the time, especially as you get older. It's just uh, it just gets harder and harder to, to make the time happen. And the fact that I'm here just with her and uh, we can literally just go and do anything as spontaneous without anybody questioning us. Because um, I'm not going to question you. Are you going to question me? Uh, well, you're questioning me right now. You just okay. asked me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Do you know how quick she is? <laughs> okay, so I will not question anything you do. We're just going to like go in a moment. Right? Okay. Yep, that's okay. exactly what we're going to do. All right. So we'll see you all next Tuesday when the next episode comes out. And yeah, go spend some time with your family. And all build right. a fort. All right. Bye. That was fun. <laughs>